Well, when you look around, it doesn't seem like things are getting any easier. Coming out of a pandemic, then economic hardship, and it feels like a downward spiral. Where shall we turn to? The Sidham Joint Worship Ministry invites you to four days of revival meetings themed Radiating His Glory from the 10th to the 13th of May 2022 from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. daily at Sidham Valley Road. The main speaker will be the presiding bishop of Sidham, Reverend Kalisto Dede. We are embracing one another. We love one another because we are being made into a family. Also ministering will be Reverend Jesse Mwai while the Sidham Joint Worship Ministry will minister in music. The revival meetings will also stream live on the Sidham Church online youtube channel come come let us relish times of refreshing that come from the presence of the lord acts chapter 3 verse 20 Tonight, Abba Father, we don't want, oh God, the strange fires. We want the real fire, the real fire tonight. Give us the real fire, that one that burns continually in your altar, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lit a flame in a brother, lit a flame in a sister. Come on, Lord, start something in that family altar, something new in that home, oh God. Let there be something that will, will begin tonight, something that will change the direction of their lives in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask tonight, oh God, for you, oh God. Feel us, oh Lord, we pray. We pray, oh God, fill us tonight in the name of Jesus. Congregation, the Lord, the Lord is willing. The Lord is actually here to minister to us tonight. The Lord is willing to minister to us. And I would like us to pray like the Bible alludes in John chapter 3 verse 8. Of the man who is led of the spirit. Let us pray that there will be a removal of rigidity in our lives. Because God is here and ready to move in us. The Bible tells us the wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So is the everyone who is led or who is born of the Spirit. Come on tonight, let us pray that we'll be men and women who have hearts that are malleable, hearts that can be changed by God. We, we come sometimes with so much fixed our minds that God does not have a move, place to move in our lives. But let us to pray tonight, God, I yield my heart to you. Do what you want to do with my life. Do give me a fresh direction. Lord, my life, I am a vessel in your hands. I am I'm, I'm, I'm just like Isaac, playing prostrate in the earth altar that you may touch me. Father, we come before you tonight. Oh God, we thank you, our Father, that you are willing to pour out your spirit upon us. And so, Father, we come before you, Lord, asking, Lord, cause us to be, oh God, people with a heart of flesh, a heart that can be changed, a heart that can... A heart that grieves at the things that grieves you, oh God. A heart that rejoices and gives itself to the things that pleases God. We pray, Abba Father, for hearts of flesh. A heart that are malleable, oh God. Oh, tonight we wage war against stone-hearted hearts. We again we wage war against our Father, the hearts of stone. In this sanctuary tonight, we pray, oh God, that ours shall be the hearts of flesh, a heart that can be used of God. Oh God. We rebuke hardness. We rebuke hardness. We pray the removal of hardness tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, Lord God, even the hard and and, and, and furrow ground, our Father, break it up tonight with your word. Break our hearts with your word that, Father, we will have a heart of flesh in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we give up our hearts to you. We give up our lives to you in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, 
Remove barriers, remove hindrances, remove, oh God, circuit breakers, things that hinder the move of God in this sanctuary. Abba Father, Lord, hard heartedness, anything, oh God, that is hindering the move of you in this place, we pray, Abba Father, remove it, oh God. We plead for a mighty move of you, O oh God, in this sanctuary. A move of you in our homes. A move of you in the online space. A move of you in this country. Lord, let there be the unstoppable move of God within us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We surrender to you, Spirit of the living God. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. Come on, child of God. I want us to wage war against hindrances, against barriers, against things that hinder us being what God wants us to be. Come on, wage war. Let wage war for this is the dest your destiny at stake. Father, we ask of you tonight. Have your way, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we rise up against us. Hard heartedness, we rise up against us. Things that law capture people in the mind, in the heart, and deviate them from your way, Abba Father. We pray tonight, mountain will melt like wax before the presence of God. We pray tonight, Abba Father, chains will be broken. Remove the yoke, O oh God. You declare, O oh God, that let my people go, that they may worship the Lord. We pray for a liberty tonight, a liberty in the spirit, a liberty in the spirit. Liberate your people tonight. O oh God. Some have been so muted by COVID. Some have been muted by the by what has come out of COVID. But tonight, Abba Father, we pray, Abba Father, we shall jump like little calves in the name of Jesus, because the ta the Lord has touched us. Oh God, give us a fresh encounter tonight. A fresh encounter tonight. A fresh encounter tonight. Oh God, with the move and the power of God. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we surrender this meeting tonight. Come on, let's surrender this meeting tonight. Let us pray for a fresh anointing upon the ministers. Let's pray for a fresh anointing upon everyone who is ministering on this altar. Lord, pray for yourself. Pray for an ear, for an ear that hears what the Lord is saying. Oh, oh Lord. We surrender this meeting to you tonight. It is all about you, Jesus. Jesus, be lifted in this sanctuary. And as you're lifted, draw all people to yourself. Draw those in the online space. Draw everyone in this sanctuary. Draw Nairobi to yourself, O oh God. O oh God. Be lifted high, O oh God. Be lifted high, O oh God. Draw us to yourself. We plead for a fresh anointing. The anointing that breaks the yoke. The anointing, oh God, that love brings us, oh God, to the presence of God. And so, Father, minister to us, oh God. Minister to us in a powerful way, oh God. Touch us tonight. Touch us tonight, oh God. Let you be glorified in this meeting. Let your power be evident in this meeting. Let's mark this meeting with signs, miracles, and wonders in the name of Jesus. Let their lives, oh God, be changed tonight. Let there be homes that are changed tonight, Abba Father. Let them change the course of even of this country be changed. So, Father, break out a revival in this place. Break out, O oh God, your power, O oh God. Abba, Father, we are humbly waiting in your presence. We are humbly waiting, O oh God. We are longing, we are thirsting. Lord, Abba, Father, come wait with us, Abba, Father. Come wait with us, Abba, Father. We consecrate ourselves before you. We come before you in repentance. That, Father, you may forgive us our sins. We come to you in repentance. 
come on, let us repent. Let us repent of anything, of any sin or any barrier, anything. It is only sin that can separate us between us and the Lord. Oh God, we come to you before you. We come to you by the blood of Jesus. And we come before you pleading. And you may forgive us, Abba Father. Let there be no ounce of sin in this altar. No ounce of sin, O oh God, in this temple represented before you, O oh God. And so, Lord, touch our lives tonight. Touch our lives tonight. Let it be, O oh God, like the Jacob's burial experience that we'll live to this, to this place, O oh God, with an experience of God, with an experience of the touch of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we yield to you. We yield to your power. We yield to you, Abba Father. We yield to your voice. We yield to your presence. We yield to you, O oh God, with all we are, Abba Father. We yield to you. We surrender. We surrender everything we are. O oh God, break the yokes tonight. Touch lives tonight. And let your presence fall, Abba Father. Let your presence fall. Let your glory fall. Let your glory fall. Let your glory fall. Lord, we are like just, oh God, a sacrifice set before you. Let your fire come and consume. Let your fire come and confirm. Let your fire come and do only what you can do, oh God. So, Father, we yield to you, O oh God. We yield to you, O oh God. That's your steadfast love. Make with your people, O oh God. And so, Father, we worship you tonight. We exalt you tonight. We adore you tonight. With the shouting of our hearts, with the clapping of our hands, we say you are worthy. We welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. With the shouting, with the clapping of our hands, come and have your way. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, we could all agree in this prayer that the Lord taught us. We could all agree together and say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For you us is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And every child of God say a big amen. As a big amen to Jesus. You can go ahead and clap your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Amen. Let it be. Let it be. Amen. We say amen, Lord, for every prayer we have made tonight. We say amen, oh Lord. We say amen to your move, to your will, to your plan, and to your purpose. Come on, open up your mouth and bless the name of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, shouts of joy. Oh, claps of victory. We bless your name tonight. We adore your name tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. And today our psalm is drawn from Psalm 42. Psalm 42, as a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. 
My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hamon, from Mount Miza, deep calls to deep. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? But tonight, verse 11, we can speak it over our lives even as we begin this time of worship and declare, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? And we can say together, put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And so in a minute, you want to lift up your voice. And I want you to tell your soul, my soul, put your hope in God. Oh, in this season of revival and refreshing, my soul, my soul, put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our praises to God? Shall we lift up our worship to God in the name of Jesus? And shall we ask our souls, hallelujah? Oh, we wait on you. We wait on you, Lord. We wait on you. We put our hope in you. We put our trust in you. We put our confidence in you, Lord. We wait on you, Jesus. Our souls, we wait on you, Lord. Our souls, we wait. Come on, lift up those hands above your heads and let's give him some praise in the house. Let's give him some worship. Hallelujah. Come on, just open that mouth. Let's give the Lord some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He, I said he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, somebody give him some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, I know you're not tired. I know you're not tired. Let's offer him the fruit of our lips. As he said, Lord, we have thrown you. We have thrown you. We have thrown you. We have thrown you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Receive our praises tonight. Come on, somebody just pray and say, Lord, receive my worship. Receive my praise. Receive my thanksgiving. Receive my sacrifice of worship tonight. Come on, just, just declare it tonight. I know you may be feeling tired or weary. Oh, receive our praises. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all. Stars. I hear the mighty thunder, I pass throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Really? 
again as a deer parted for the waters God we wait on you this day hallelujah hallelujah yeah. come higher oh. can we take the chart come
Jesus, Jesus. We adore your name and we bless you, Jesus. We bow down and worship your name, O King of Kings. Because indeed there is none like you, our Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Worship him, somebody call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you, we magnify you, we glorify you, our Father, for who you are, Spirit of the living God. We worship you in this place, our Father. We are calling for a revival today. We are calling for a revival today, Lord. Revive us again, our Father. Revive us again, Spirit of the living God. Revive us, our Father. Revive us, O Lord. We worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes, Lord, we worship you this day, Lord. We honor you, King of kings. Lord, even as we draw near to you, Lord, we pray that you draw near to us, O King of glory. Draw me close to you this day, our Father.
lift up your voice to him. Worship him in the beauty of his glory. We cannot worship him now. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our adoration. Come on in the house of the Lord. Lift up your voice to him and adore him. Give him glory, give him praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to him. Hallelujah to the Father. To him be glory and praise. Everyone lift up your voice to him. Adore him in the beauty of his glory. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the King. To him be honor and praise. To him that died for us. To him that was and is. Come on, just lift up your voice. Lift up your hands. I told him in the beauty of his glory. He is worthy. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy, Lord. We bow to honor you. You are the great I am. You are lifted over all. You reign supreme. You reign over all. Blessed be your name. Just lift up your voice. We can never worship him enough. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our praise. He is the Alpha and the Omega. To him belong the praise. The kingdom belongs to him. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Lift a song and praise him. Glory. Sing a song tonight. Worship him. Sing a new song. Holy Ghost. You worthy. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. We bow down and worship you. We are desperate without you. You are Bow down and worship him. Bow down and adore him. He is worthy. He reigns. He reigns. You reign, Lord. You reign. You reign, Lord. You reign over all. You reign, Lord. You reign forever. You reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 113 and verse 3. From the rising of the sun to the place that it goes down, the name of the Lord is to be praised. For his name is above all the nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who dwells on high? And pours his spirit upon us. Why don't you just lift up your hands and say, Lord, Holy Spirit, do it again tonight. Do it again tonight, Holy Spirit. Do it again in my life. Hallelujah. Do it again. Draw me closer to yourself. Come on, lift up your voice. The Holy Spirit, draw me near. Draw me to yourself. Draw me closer. Closer tonight, closer tonight, closer, Holy Spirit, closer, Holy Spirit, glory, Holy Spirit, glory, closer to you, draw me closer, draw us closer, draw us closer. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, do it again. Do it again tonight. Draw us closer. Draw us closer tonight. Draw us to yourself tonight. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, Jesus. 
Why don't you lift up those holy hands before the Father and give the Lord praise in the house. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. We exalt you, eternal King. You are the awesome God. You are the one who changes not. We bless your name, Lord. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. There is none like you, Lord. We give all the glory, my God of Israel. We bless your name. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be exalted. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You know, the psalmist said in Psalms 27 and verse number 4, he said, One thing I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze at the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Come on, if you came to seek the Lord, give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Because your presence is already here with us, Lord. Come and do only what you can do. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on church, would you want to praise the Lord? Just bless the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Whoa. Whoa. Hallelujah. I now understand the psalmist when he said, I was happy what they said to me. It has gone into the house of the Lord. And earlier he had said that in the presence of God, Hallelujah. Come on, people. We bless the Lord for his goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you take your seats, just look at the person standing next to you and give them just a nice smile. Welcome them into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We want to appreciate this wonderful worship team. Come on, go ahead and appreciate them. Wow. They have done an amazing job. In taking us into the presence of God. Welcome into the house of the Lord. This is Sitambari Road. Where Christ, thank God I didn't say Clay City. My name is Pastor Njeroge and uh, by the grace of God I'm serving at Sitam Clay City as a senior pastor. And we bless the Lord uh, for this awesome time. That he has granted us to be in his house. I want you to do something for me. I know there are people who are following us online. Or maybe probably you have friends who don't know that it's a revival happening. I want you to go into your pocket and get your phone if you don't already have it in your hands. And I want you to take something we call a selfie. By now I know we all understand what a selfie is. And as our deputy bishop said on the first day, he said this, you tap the camera, but you are not, you are, the camera is actually looking at you. Take a selfie uh, with your neighbor and give it a smile. And then that selfie, this is what you are going to do with it. You go into your Twitter account and tweet. And we are using a number of hashtags, two of them to be specific. The first hashtag is, it is a revival 2022. The second hashtag is radiating his glory. You can do that on Twitter. You can do that on Facebook. And actually on Facebook, you can even share and invite people to follow. And you can also do that on your WhatsApp accounts. Even that neighborhood account. Send it there and let people know that we are here and we are getting blessed. Amen. Let me see by a show of hand. Probably you don't fellowship in Sitam Valley Road, or maybe even in any of our Sitam assemblies, but you are here today. We want to see you and appreciate you and thank God that you came to fellowship with us. Do we have any of such kind 
in our midst. Oh yes, come on church, just appreciate our first time visitors. We bless the Lord for you. Thank you for coming. We want to believe that you are going to be blessed and blessed in a big way today. And for your sake, allow me to give you the geography of this place. If you'd want to use the washrooms uh, on my right, which is your left, once you just walk out there, you are going to see the washrooms. And I believe uh, in case you have any other need, we have ushers all over this place and you will be assisted in a good way. I want also to welcome our online viewers, those who are following us on our social media platforms and Hope TV. We are live on Hope TV. We bless God for you and we want to believe that you shall also be blessed. Amen. And just in case you would want to get in touch with us for prayer or for counseling, kindly use the following numbers. The first number, 784 277277. Let me do that again. 0784277277 or 0728221221. And I believe you will be assisted. We want to worship the Lord with our giving. In Sitam, we believe that giving is part of worship. Go into your pocket, get a good offering, or in case you are giving through Mpesa. I am going to give us the Mpesa pay bill number in a short while. So let me ask the ushers to wait on us, even as the worship team comes back on stage uh, to lead us in worship as we worship the Lord with our giving. Thank you, ushers. God bless you for that. We want to pray first before we give. And once we pray, you will go ahead and give. We thank you, our Lord and our God, for the amazing presence that we are experiencing in your house. Lord, I believe that none of us is going to leave this place the same way that we came in. And therefore, I pray that even as we worship you with our giving, that Lord, this will come to you as a sweet-smelling aroma. To the glory and the honor of your name. Bless every giver. And Lord those who do not have. Provide unto them. And Lord we even pray for our economy. That is battered by many things. The Lord there will be a major transformation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord we pray that you sustain businesses. May you sustain jobs. May you open doors and bless your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. We worship you and we honor you. In Jesus name we pray. Go ahead and worship the Lord with your giving. In case you are giving by M-Pesa, thank you media for projecting the M-Pesa pay bill number. It is 933-934. 933-934. And the account is offering. And we will be blessed. And as we do that, uh, the worship team uh, will lead us in worship. Alone, my hope is 
us the word this evening is none other than our senior pastor Sita Mburuburu and also the pastor in charge of worship in Sita Reverend Jesse Mwai hallelujah he will be coming to share with us the word just after we get to sing to the Lord a hymn God bless you up on your feet.
Oh, come on, give him a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. Come on, let's thank him for the comforter tonight. The Holy Spirit is among us. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just want to appreciate the worship team. Come on, let's encourage them a bit better than that. Thank you. God bless you, worship team. This team is made up of members from most of our assemblies. We have uh, some of the members coming all the way from Meru. We have people from Nakuru. I mean, and they've been working really hard just preparing for this time. And we just want to appreciate. They have made great sacrifices. And we just want to appreciate them for how God has used them this past three days. Let's just appreciate them one more time. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Also, we just want to take this opportunity to just honor our bishop for allowing us to have these three days, bringing us together. We just want to appreciate. Thank you, bishop. Thank you. And of course, we also want to appreciate Pastor Mugambi for allowing us to be here at Sitam Valley Road. And did I mention the state of the art? Sitam Valley Road. He said he's very happy here. I know why. <laughs> Amen. But we thank God for Sitam Valley Road. And, uh, and of course, we also just appreciate our deputy bishop together with his wife. They are here. We just want to appreciate them. And... Um, just look at your neighbor and appreciate them for coming. Amen. Tell them it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Tomorrow, we climax this week of revivals with an anointing service. We want to invite, tomorrow is a Friday night, it's a Friday evening, and uh, we want to ask you to invite you to, you know, invite a friend, invite somebody we are going to have an anointing service. We'll be praying for everyone who needs prayer. We'll be laying hands on you. We'll be anointing you with oil. I thought I would hear a few more amens than that. All right, so tomorrow night, please don't miss. Our bishop will also be ministering to us, but we'll spend the bulk of that service praying for one another. How many of you need a breakthrough in this season? You need a breakthrough? Tomorrow is the night. You have a date with a comforter himself. He will be here just as he is here this evening. Greetings from my dear wife. I have two, I have two ladies in my life. Uh, one of them is my wife. The other one is my daughter. And they send their greetings. Of course, they're not able to join us tonight because my daughter is in school. So one of us has to stay with her at home. But I'm sure they are following online. So receive their greetings. Receive greetings from Sitam Buruburu. Amen. Amen. It's not yet state of the art, but we are, we are, we are getting there. We are getting there. <laughs> Amen. Now, last night, I was in a bit of a dilemma. Because last night, Pastor Obara was preaching. And you know, like preachers normally say, he preached my sermon. <laughs> um... As we were preparing, of course, for this, uh, for this time of these revival meetings, God had already dropped a word in my heart. Now, every year, I don't know uh, about other pastors, but every year, normally God will give me a signature sermon or a signature word that normally I would find myself preaching different places. And I knew that that was a word that I had to preach this evening. In fact, last weekend on Saturday night, I was preaching the same word in Namibia. And I knew that this is what God wanted me to communicate with us. The good thing is that in the house of the Lord and in ministry, there is no such thing as plagiarism. <laughs> Isn't it a good thing? There's no copyright to summons, you know. So I really do believe, so as I sat there and I was wondering, okay, so should I change? Should I not change? And uh, I, I just felt the Holy Spirit rebuking me. I said, I gave you that word, you're going to preach it. So even if it's, it's word for word, I will still preach it because you need to hear it. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So before you switch me off, you need to hear this word because I think it's important. So we'll be turning to Ezekiel chapter 37. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 37. 
And I want to speak to us an author of entitled, The Sound of Revival. The Sound of Revival. Ezekiel 37 verse 1, the hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. Now he led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. Now he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. Now I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Now, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And I, as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and the tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. And so to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into this slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it, declares the Lord. Father, for the utterance of your word, I want to ask for your spirit, for that divine unction, dear Lord. The Lord, as I utter it, may not be just my words, but may be your spirit. And I pray for everyone who is listening, both who are, those who are here and those who are watching online. Would you speak to us, dear Father, minister to your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we all say, Amen. Now, um, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 15 says that whatever is, already has, whatever is has already been. And what will be has been before. And God will call the past to account. So whatever is has already been. In other words, there is really nothing new under the sun. Now, I know we live in a generation, in a culture that is mesmerized by new things. We love novelty. We love new stuff. When we talk about that God is going to do a new thing, of course he will do a new thing, but we are so captivated by new things, innovative stuff, innovative things. And sometimes that gets in the way of how God deals with us or how we respond to God because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't change. He is the same God and what he has, he has already done in the past, he will still do in our time. Now, it is important also for us as God's people to understand that it's, it's, it's an important, it's, an, it's our imperative to be able to understand the times that we're living in. Like the sons of Issachar, we need to cultivate in ourselves a culture of understanding the times, the days that we're living in, so that we can give interpretation to the times and what God is doing in our time. You see, the time of Corona, and thank God we are coming out of Corona. I mean, there was a lot of voice. There was a lot of people prophesying, prophecies that never came to pass. Everybody trying to make sense of what was going on. And I remember actually uh, doing a YouTube video, and I was just trying to tell people, listen, go back to the word. Uh, corona should not have caught us by surprise because these are the signs of the ends of the times. It was already prophesied, and uh, Jesus Christ himself prophesied that in these last days we will see pestilences, diseases, wars, and rumors of war. These are the signs of the ends 
of the time. But unfortunately for too many Christians, sometimes we find ourselves, actually, during Corona, during that season, the trending videos were videos of people prophesying, saying, I slept and God gave me this dream. And somebody would just in the morning make a video and within an hour, thousands have watched that video. And as a result, so many people became so confused. But we are supposed to be like the sons of Issachar, understanding the times and the seasons that we are living in. Allow me, today I'm going to take you back a little bit, and I'm just going to give you, this is going to sound more like a his, history lesson, but I just want to take you back a little bit because, and this is my thesis, or this is my premise, that the road to revival runs through the past. Did you hear me? The road to revival runs through the past. These are revival meetings, and we are here praying and believing that God will revive us again. But the road to this revival that we so honestly desire actually runs through the past. In fact, I'm going to uh, give you some facts, some historical facts, and let me begin by saying this, that is it possible, and I want to pose this question, is it possible that we are living on the precipice of a revival? Is it possible that, that we are on the verge of a spiritual revival like we have never seen? See, a hundred years ago, a hundred years ago, uh, the world was dealing with another pandemic, the Spanish flu. Some of you may know that. The Spanish flu, just like coronavirus, actually lasted just a little over two years. Unfortunately, the Spanish flu was deadly because at that time, of course, they did not have all the medical advancement that we have today. So it claimed the lives of uh, more than 50 million people the world over. More than 500 million were actually infected by the Spanish flu. And this happened just 100 years ago, from 1918 to about 1920, 21, thereabouts. Now, during that season, while the world was dealing with this pandemic, coming out of this pandemic, just like we are coming out of a pandemic, the, in, here in Africa, we were dealing also with other issues that are so similar to actually what we're dealing with even right now. Africa, at that particular time, you know, was mostly under colonial rule. East Africa was divided. Our own region was divided denominationally. Uh, denominationalism promoted a sense of division among Christians. Now, if you look at our, our geography, our, you know, our map in this country, you will notice one thing, that uh, different denominations dominated certain areas. Am I right? I mean, and uh, depending on where we ca you come from, we can almost tell where your Christian roots are. Am I right? All right, and it's still evident today. And that was a scenario then. See, Christianity had come to Africa, of course, much, much earlier than that. But then, uh, during that season, the church was divided, especially an, along denomination lines. Today, in our time, the church is so divided. Did you realize that? Everybody is saying one thing or the other. Did you know that in this country, starting a church is the easiest thing you can do? It is easier to start a church in this country than it is to start a kiosk. Anybody can actually start a church and preach their own Christianity according to how they feel it. The other thing that was happening about 100 years ago during that same season, as the world was coming out of this, out of the pandemic, uh, conversion into Christianity, although, yes, the church was here, although there was a lot of denominations, Christianity or conversion, as people converted into Christianity, it was mainly nominal. I mean, it was not some real conversions. Let me explain what, I, what, what I'm talking about. A lot of people... As the missionaries will speak to them, a lot of people would accept or receive Christianity, but primarily because of material benefits they would actually receive. So in that time, a lot, there was a lot of nominalism. So people would come to church, uh, the churches would be full, but on, uh, and that was on a Sunday they would come and worship, but on Monday they would go back to their old traditions. Now, it was a season where uh, a lot of people, of course, for you to become a Christian, I mean, all you had to do was just to accept what you were being taught, then come and change the way you dress. 
And then after that, they will give you a name, which they called Christian name, but now we know it is an English name. Are you with me? And then they will baptize you. So if, you are, if, you, if your name was Mwai Kamau, like me, after you're baptized, they will give you an English. Then once you had that name, then you were considered to be a Christian. And then they will tell you that you need to change the clothes that you're wearing. What I'm wearing right now, this is not Christian. This is Western dressing. Are you with me? And they made, so a lot of people became Christians. And of course, as you became a Christian, opportunities will open up for you. I mean, for education and whatever. So a lot of people will become Christians, but they were Christians only in the sight of the missionaries. But when they went back home, they went back to their own traditions. They went back to even animal sacrifices. They went back to doing the things that they knew how to do. But to please the missionaries, they would wear a form of Christianity that denied the power. Uh, can I suggest to you, in our own time, we are also seeing the increase of nominal Christianity. And in our time and in our day, our churches are full, or at least they were full before Corona. They are full, but there is a little impact even in our nation, even in our country, or even in our institutions, nominalism. So we have a lot of people today who come to church, but there is no real commitment to the God of Christianity. I mean, they are happy to, they are happy to give their tithe, they are happy to give their offerings, but they are still very nominal. But also, the other thing that is happening, I don't know whether you have, may have noticed, in our time, a new phenomena, especially in the past few years, has actually emerged. There are large sections of the church today that are actually going back to tradition. Did you know that? There are traditions that are actually being preached on the pulpit. And, and, and people are being forced and being reminded, by the way, before you became a Christian, you were an African. And people are being pushed, and I have evidence, and I know uh, a relative of mine who belongs to one of those churches and is really, really struggling because, because the things that she's actually seeing in the church, people being pushed back to go back to tradition, much in the same way that was happening a hundred years ago. Are you still with me here? Corruption. A hundred years ago, one of the things that also had happened uh, because of that nominalism, there was a lot of corruption uh, in the church, within the body of Christ. It was affecting God's people uh, and, and, and corruption in all forms, starting actually from the priesthood, from those who are supposed to be leading Christians. There was a lot of corruption and all manner of things. Did I mention also, by the way, that a hundred years ago, the people were as divided ethnically as they are today? There was a lot of uh, negative ethnicity that was happening. And the uh, same thing that we are seeing in our times. Now, I want to suggest to us, friends, that there was something that was happening then that is happening now that is so similar that it pushes me to believe that God is about to do something because sometimes God allows for the right situation for him to do something spiritually, to bring a revival because while the world was whatever was happening a hundred years ago and the world was dealing with all these things and here as a region we were dealing with our own issues also something began happening in the church in fact some members of the church of uganda some members of a church in uganda in the anglican church started becoming dissatisfied with the way in which sin was being handled and how mod modernity had even affected the church. Now, the initial drive that uh, led to the, you know, to the spread of Christianity by this time seemed to have plateaued, you know, when the, with the coming of Christianity. So something else had taken over the church. Corruption, actually, prompted some members to seek a, met a method to renew the faith and the community. Now, there was some, some, uh, a certain gentleman in that church in Uganda. His name, and some of you may have known that name if you know your history, by the name of Simeon Nsibambi. I don't know if you've ever heard of that name. And this man became so dissatisfied. 
He started feeling that there's something that is wrong. There's something wrong with the church. He was an Anglican. He was actually also a teacher in the Anglican church. And of course, moving from, uh, from, from Uganda to Rwanda, that was where he used to uh, minister around that region. And he began feeling that unease. Something is not right. And I pray that God is, is stirring some of us to begin feeling uncomfortable with the times and the seasons that you're living. And I pray that God is beginning to do something in our hearts, a dissatisfaction, where we are saying, Lord, we are dissatisfied with the status quo. You have to do something. See, we are not here these four days just for us to feel good. We are here so that God can begin stirring something inside of our hearts, inside of our Oh, how I pray that in Christ is the answer ministries. We will have have men and women, young people who will be dissatisfied with the status quo, who will say, Lord, there's got to be more. Lord, there's got to be a move that we are waiting for. Lord, we are tired of just going to church and coming out of church the same way that we came in and the same way that we left. Come on, do I have a witness in the house of the Lord? This man, I mean, the guy was not a prominent person. He was just a member in the church. And he started feeling that unease and discomfort. He brought his dissatisfaction uh, with the scene of the church leadership at that time. And he searched for revival from Uganda to Rwanda. And the revival movement began to take root in northern Rwanda. Now this man, he connected with another gentleman, a, a missionary. This man was called Joe Church, who was a pioneer of the Rwanda mission in, in a place called uh, Gahini in Rwanda. And uh, the two of them came together. They began praying together. They began conversing about the state of the church. And something began happening. Through these two men, something began to shift. Something began to move. Now, this movement suddenly began to spread. It spread largely in the grassroots. Uh, it began to spread through the formation of small groups. I mean, people started coming together. Something was ignited in the spirit. Now, many accounts from individuals involved in the movement cite the power of the Holy Spirit as the essential for the success that they saw. Many of them say, no, it had, it had nothing to do with us. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. This movement spearheaded, of course, in part, uh, now, Joe Church was uh, the pioneer of the, what they called the Rwanda Mission. And uh, this movement suddenly started crossing borders. And then this allowed the movement to continue spreading further back even into Uganda. Now remember, it started somewhere in Gahini, in a place called in Rwanda. And it started crossing borders into Uganda. Then it started uh, slowly but surely made its entrance eventually into Kenya and into Tanzania. The revival moved into Kenya around 1937, by the way. From the moment that it started in the 20s, finally it landed. See, God is never in a hurry. Are you with me? What started as a small thing, that flame began to grow. The next thing, it was in Kenya in the 30s. And, 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 and uh, as the Rwanda mission, they actually sent a team to a place in Kabete, just, of course, uh, not, not far from here. And the message of unity across racial ethnic and denomination divisions was especially important to the spread of revival throughout Kenya. Did you notice that? That in Kenya it took on a very interesting shape, by the way, that the insistence was that we must be united. The church must be united. Ethnically, we must be united. I mean, and, and, and denominationally, we must be united. The call, the clarion call was for unity when that revival hit this country. Now, although this revival began in the Anglican church, it affected every denomination. It spread to the Presbyterians, spread to the Methodists, spread to the Lutherans, the Mennonites. Nobody was left untouched. Now, it was in its initial stages when this movement started, when this revival started to sweep, it initially it was called the Rwanda movement because its first manifestations were in Gahini. But then it started to develop or gain another name. It started to be universally referred to as the Balokole. 
Palokole is a Luganda word that means the saved people. All right? Now, these guys, they started calling them the Balokole. So when you saw these guys, because they would identify themselves. So wherever they went, they didn't care whether you're Muslim, they didn't care whether you're a believer or not. Whenever they went, they identified themselves by giving a testimony. And they would say, my name is so-and-so, and I am born again. Jesus is my Savior and my Lord. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? And, as a, and because of that, so people, out of spite for them, started calling them balakole. Look at this balakole. Do I have any balakoles tonight? Yes. <laughs> now, initially, the Christians were a bit, they, they were a bit uh, uncomfortable. But then eventually, they, they, they embraced the name. They embraced this you know, new identity. And, and they said, yes, we are actually, we are the saved people. The Balakole, they accepted this term. But also among themselves, they more often refer to themselves as Aboluganda, which means brothers and sisters. Because now they were the brethren, the fellowship. There was no longer divisions among them. There was no Kikuyu and Lu and Kalenjin. They were just the fellowship, the brethren, they refer to one another as my brother, my sister. It didn't matter what denomination you came from. They said you are a Boluganda, and that's what matters. In fact, the singing of the Luganda hymn, Tukutendereza, Tukutendereza Yesu, became the defining marker of membership of the fellowship and they sang it regularly and often at meetings whether in church or in the home or even in the marketplace so whenever you in fact can you imagine whenever you met a fellow uh, maybe balokole like you you were in the marketplace you say to kuten <laughs> maybe we need to start singing that song again in swahili you're singing it in Uganda. We find it in Swahili. But are you with me? And to Gutenberg came to be used as a greeting between the brethren. The Luganda terminology spread far, it spread far beyond the areas where Luganda was used and has actually remained part of their basic vocabulary even today. The Balokole. The revivalists, by the way, some of their characteristics was this. This is what they insisted on. All right? They insisted that on a focus on sin and repentance. All right? They insisted on a focus of the cross. There was a focus on baptism in the Holy Spirit. In other words, for you to be a balakole, this was a criterion. You must have repented. Not in secret. <laughs> you had to step out and say, I repent. And okay, I was going to say unfortunately, but fortunately, you would even spell out your sins. <laughs> All right? Of course, the cross was central to everything that they did. Baptism in the Holy, they were unapologetic about baptism in the Holy Spirit. They talked about sanctification and then the quest for holiness demanded that you must be holy. If you didn't show up in church for two, three days or through two, three Sundays, somebody will be at your door. My brother, my sister, is it well with you? If you met somebody in the streets and they did, they did not give you their testimony because they were in a hurry, that was cause for intercession for that person. Because they say, I met so and so. They did not share the testimony. We need to pray for them. And by the way, the testimony was not what God did 20 years ago. It had to be current. What has he been telling you? In fact, what did he tell you this morning <laughs> when you had your quiet time? 
Conversion was an overwhelming experience for them of brokenness at the cross, which provoked a public confession of sin. Now, previous Christian experience, this is how they, 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 they interpret it. They say, any previous, quote-unquote, Christian experience, apart from a radical conversion, was not recognized. So they didn't care if you were baptized as a child. <laughs> they didn't care if you were a member of the church. It didn't matter even if you're, you're, a, you're, you're an elder. The question was, have you been converted? In fact, they, they say the previous experience, apart from this event of, of radical conversion, was not recognized as kulokoka. That was the word. The state of being saved. You know, and of course now some of these words are making sense to you. Kulokoka. We took it and we say kuokoka. The, by the, this also this revival, the, it rejected moralism. So, in other words, now, not to say that they were not moral. They, of course, insisted on, on, a, on, a, on a moral lifestyle, right? Absolute standards. But for them, it was not just simply you changing your ways. There had to be a conversion of the soul. Because for them, life began and ended at the cross of Jesus Christ. They also rejected humanistic philosophies that negated the necessity of the cross. For them, there was no such thing as self-discovery. <laughs> there was no such thing as self-actualization. For them, there was no such thing as power principles to succeed. In other words, they rejected anything that was humanistic. Unfortunately, we are living in a time, brethren, where we have emptied the cross of its power. And today we are in some churches, and thank, you know, maybe I don't think it's happening here in Sitam, but in some places I have been to churches where the whole sermon had to do with John Maxwell. One time I went to a church, and that was the last time I was in that church, and, 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 and the sermon of the day was, of the day, in fact, the pastor was doing a series on how to defeat stress. So now that sounds like a good sermon. My problem was this. I can teach you, of course, there was no mention of the cross, there was no mention of salvation, nothing. I can teach you how to defeat stress. And then you will be stress-free all the way to hell. <laughs> Are you getting my point? The Balakole refused to, in that time, the Balakole refused to take the oaths that were being demanded of militant nationalists in the Kenya Mau Mau movement of the 19th. They, re they rejected oath taking. They refused, by the way, in Rwanda, they refused to kill or, uh, or, or take the goods of Tutsis in that Hutu revolution in Rwanda. They refused, they said, we don't want any part of it. They refused to fall in with the Boganda nationalism or the Kabaka at that particular time. In others, for them, everything was about the cross. Where the, when there was a problem, they went on their knees and they prayed. Because for them, their cry was, Yesu Yeka, Jesus only. Nevertheless, they did see themselves also as modeling a non-racial, non-tribal, non-ethnic, non-denominational solidarity with those who were saved. The Balakole emphasized their countercultural identity. I mean, they were not ashamed to say we are a countercultural society. We are different. They refused to make compromise with the traditional spirituality and the idolatrous practices of all religion. They will not participate in rituals which bound together people of different groups of status. That's how radical, now, that sounds familiar in this country, doesn't it? They will not participate. Those rituals that bring people together of different groups. I don't want to sound politically incorrect here, so I will move on. They insisted on monogamy. You're wondering what monogamy means. <laughs> One of the Balokole, remarkable Balokole in Kenya, was a man by the name of John Gatto. John Gatto was the, 
Uh, of course, he's late now. He died in 2017 in May. And uh, I had the privilege of meeting John Gatto when I, was, when I was getting married because he was a great friend of my father-in-law. And I, I still have a Bible. When he came to my wedding, I still have a Bible that he signed. He was a, that time, of course, uh, uh, and, and he was already old and everything, but he was just a man full of wisdom. And I remember just spending some time with him, a very humble man. And this man, John Gatto, of course, became the first secretary general of the Presbyterian Church. That was just right after independence in 1963. But he was a notable balokole, a major actor in the development of the revival in Kenya, especially in those years of colonialism. He helped to establish the revival as, in, as integral to the life of the Protestant churches in Kenya and was actually a key actor in shaping priorities of his own Presbyterian Church in the first decades of independence and in reflecting on the relationship between African and Western forms of Christianity. Remember, he's the one who came up with that whole uh, ideology of moratorium between the West and, and, and African missionaries and what have you. But the man was unapologetic about his stand to the day that he died. Friends, I ask one more time, give in the light of all this that I have shared with us, the East African revival came on the heels of a context that is very similar to where we are today. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So then let's go back to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. Now, of course, Ezekiel, and I'm not going to go too much into the background because Pastor Obara already did that, but Ezekiel chapter 37 is one of the most profound uh, experience or one of the most pro profound texts that you'll ever find in the scripture. See, Ezekiel was a prophet, and one of the things, one of his characteristics is that he was one of those prophets who used a lot of symbols and, and all these kind of things that you find even here. So here he says that he was in the spirit. So we don't know whether it was a trance or a vision or what exactly he means that he was actually in the spirit. But then God brings him to this place, to this valley, and the valley is full of bones. In fact, the Bible tells us not just bones, but they were dry. They were very, somebody say very. They were very dry, which basically means that this valley, it was silent. It was quiet. Now, if you think a, grave, a graveyard is a silent place, try a valley of dead bones. It was completely uh, quiet, and these bones clearly had been in this particular position for a long time because they were very dry, which basically means they had been subjected to the elements, and any moisture that had been left in them had dried up. And then more than that, all these bones, of course, being there with no flesh in them, had now probably been jumbled up, having been uh, exposed to the elements, the wind, and of course, they will all be jumbled up and maybe into one big hip. So Ezekiel is walking to and fro and he's seeing all these dead bones and he's seeing all this, all this um, uh, dead, I mean there's just silence, nothing is going, nothing is moving in that place. Completely quiet, completely dead, everything is still. And suddenly Ezekiel realizes he is standing in the middle of a problem, an impossibility. Are you with me? And the first thing in that story or in that episode is that Ezekiel is confronted with a problem. Now remember, God is about to give him a word for his people. His people who had been so discouraged. His people who had been scattered. Now Ezekiel gets a word, but God is going to first take him through a certain process himself. So he's in the midst of a problem. I want to suggest to us, friends, even as we sit here and in, 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 this, in this place tonight, that many of us probably feel like Ezekiel tonight when you look at your own life. Maybe when you look at your own marriage. Maybe when you look at your own children. Maybe coronavirus dealt a blow to your business. And when you think of where you used to be and where you are now, you are probably feeling this is a valley of dry bones. Have you ever sat sometimes and even looked at the state of the church 
today in this country and everybody is doing their own things. One of the things that will surprise you, a lot of the TV channels today, the free-to-air TV channels, most of them are owned by different churches. And sometimes you sit at home and you tune to some of those channels and all you see is a valley of dry bones. Because some of the things that are being preached, see, it's unfortunate that in this country today that there's a price tag for everything. There's a price tag for a prophecy. There's a price tag for a miracle. There's a price tag for a blessing. One time I was preaching in a certain place and I'm preaching my heart out and then, and then some people started coming to the altar, started drop, dropping money there. You know, we don't do that in Sitam. So I'm wondering. So when they started coming this way, I went this way. Because I, I, I honestly don't know. Never done this. I wasn't selling anything. I didn't ask them to sow a seed. So I don't know whether I'm supposed to pick. And I don't know. I don't know how they do this thing. So I move on this side. Others are coming on this side. So I'm there. I keep running away. And I'm wondering, what is this? And, and I realize, I realize we have so much commercialized the gospel, friends. There's a price tag for everything. If you preach a good summer, there's a price tag that is attached to that. The church, as we look at it today, with all the theatrics, let me tell you, is a valley of dry bones and very dry bones. You see, what happens is that when God is not moving, when we are not seeing the miraculous, we have a way of creating our own miracles. When, when there's no revival, when there is a deadness in the church, we introduce more programs. Uh oh, I'm about to get into trouble here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When, 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 when there's so much dryness and then and, and people are no longer depending on the Holy Spirit, we begin creating sermons that are supposed to manipulate you. See, God doesn't need my help to move. All I have to do is just preach the gospel and God is God all by himself. I don't have to manipulate him. I don't have to command him. All he asked me to do was to preach the gospel. But sometimes because we want to see a move of God, so we become so theatrical. That is why somebody will go and buy airtime. And for the whole 30 minutes, he's with somebody on the pulpit doing theatrics. Why do I have, tell me friends, why do I have to watch my screen for 30 minutes to watch a preacher talking to a demon? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Of what benefit is it to me when you're con And by the way, why are you conversing with a demon? Because the Bible says that the enemy is a liar. When he lies, he speaks his native language. He's not even telling you the truth. And then you're there. Muko angapi to kwatato. Talk up. Seriously. And then the guy at the end of it comes and says, if you want to receive a tuma, tuma kwa hii namba sahizi, ikingia kwa nikiyola tu sahizi, nita kuombea, the devil is a liar. Yeah. The problem, when we look at our own country, we have a problem, friends. Now we are in electioneering time. Suddenly you recognize what tribe I come from. Suddenly who I am is more important than anything else. We have a problem. We have a problem as Kenyans. As a church, I feel we have, made, we have failed to make a difference. Our politicians are having a field day. I have news for you, friends. These are the same old people, different alliances, giving the same promises they gave 20, 30 years ago. And I'm telling you, and sometimes I wonder, what silver bullets do you have now that you did not have 20 years ago or last year? It's the same old people, and we have allowed them to walk all over us. We don't ask the hard questions. Instead, even as a church, sometimes we take partisan positions. Small wonder God cannot move in our midst because we have created idols out of our political leaders' friends. 
There are people probably who are even sitting here for you, the politician. What he has to say is more important than what the Holy Spirit has to tell you. Friends, the devil is a liar. And I believe God is calling us back. He's calling us back and he's asking us to arise even in this time of electioneering, friends. Because I'm here to remind us that it's not a new political party that will make a difference. Friends, it's not a new ideology that will make a difference. It's not a new position of prime minister that will make a difference in this country. It is when God's people recognize who they are and we begin changing the destiny of this nation. We begin by changing it on our knees. We begin by changing it by going back to the cross where there is a real conversion, where we are touched, where we are transformed, where we are changed. It's going to happen when God's people wait on him for the infilling of the Holy Spirit spirit uh, and we can move and walk out there with the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit there's a problem friends there's a problem I said we have a problem like Ezekiel was there on that day looking at all these bones bones that were very dry oh bones that there was no hope Bones, it was an impossibility that any life could come back to them. But I'm also here to announce to us where the situation is impossible. I introduce you to a God of impossibilities. A God who specializes in bringing back dead things back to life in Jesus' name. But then notice in this story, so Ezekiel is there. He has seen all the dead bones. The second thing, so uh, God asks him, son of man, can these bones live? Have you ever looked at your situation and wondered whether anything can good, good can come out of it? Anybody who is here like me, have you ever found yourself in such a desperate situation that you did not know whether you were coming or you're going? Have you ever found yourself, things have happened and, 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 and you don't even want to wake up in the morning because you are afraid that if I hear one more bad report, Come on, talk to me in this house. And God asks him, son of man, can these bones live? God is asking you. He's asking me tonight. He's asking us, sit down. Can these bones live? And look at what Ezekiel said. Sovereign Lord, you alone no of course different commentators will give different ideas on exactly probably what was going on with Ezekiel and why he gave that response because he could have he could have said Lord you he will have like a nice Pentecostal I say in Jesus name I know it is possible <laughs> but 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 Ezekiel was being honest so the second thing after the problem was a prayer because prayer is dialogue with God. Prayer happens when I see the problem. When I realize that without God, I cannot do this. When I realize that this is a valley of dry bones, it pushes me back on my knees to pray. But here is a problem. We have also reduced prayer to, for our own comfort. So when I go through a situation, all I'm looking for is my own comfort. But can I tell you, friends, the prayers that God answers are not prayers for my comfort. They are prayers that are in accordance with his will. Because God's priority, can I shock you? God's priority is not your comfort. God's priority is his will. Now, here's the problem with his will is that sometimes it will make me uncomfortable. Like I'm uncomfortable right now sweating in front of a thousand people. <laughs> God's will will take you places that you do not want to go. Do I have some real people in the house? It is God's will that will make a wife go and submit to her husband. 
That one knows that has no amen is fine. Okay, so it is God's will that will make a husband go and submit, uh, not submit, but go and <laughs> but it is God's will that will go me, make me go back to my wife even when she's not been nice to me and I still hold her and say I love you while in my heart <laughs> but I say Lord because I fear God more than I fear you it is God's will are you getting what I'm saying but we have preached the gospel of comfort Oh, that this is what God wants. I'm not saying that you will not enjoy the good things. You will enjoy the good things in this life. But sometimes, God will even give you material things so that he can ask for them tomorrow. <laughs> because the priority is his will. So Ezekiel knows this. So he throws it back to God and says, Lord, only you no. And sometimes we, that should be the essence of our prayer. Lord, only you know. Jesus, on that garden of Gethsemane, struggling and sweating before the, three times he prayed, Lord, if it's your will, take this cup. But he says, nonetheless, not my will. Knowing what was before him. Friends, his priority in prayer is his will. So Ezekiel is in conversation with God. But then notice the progression of this story. Then out of that dialogue and conversation, uh, and he's seen what is in, before him. So God speaks to him. So he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word. Of the, this is what the sovereign Lord, the Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I could. Now understand, Ezekiel is a prophet. Ezekiel is used to prophesying to people who can respond. Are you with me? Ezekiel is used to prophesying to people who are alive. Now God tells him to go and prophesy to the dead bones, to the dry bones. <laughs> Thank God Ezekiel, a man of God, doesn't argue with God. He goes and, and of course even God tells him what to say. He goes and begins prophesying. Now, yesterday Pastor Obara also mentioned the essence of prophecy. Prophecy has two aspects to it. It is both forth telling and foretelling. Now, I know most of the times we are more taken in by uh, the, next year the Lord will do this and that. And for us, that's the whole essence of prophecy. But prophecy is also foretelling when God speaks to you in your current situation where you are. So what I am doing right now standing before you, I'm actually prophesying. And guess what? I'm also prophesying to dead bones. Are you with me? So he tells Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones. In fact, prophesy life to them. Open your mouth and begin speaking. Because until you open your mouth, nothing will happen. Now Ezekiel could have said, God, like seriously, you, can do, you don't need me. Why don't you start doing something fast? And then I'll prophesy. But whatever was supposed to happen on that valley was dependent on Ezekiel's obedience. And until he opened his mouth, nothing was going to happen. So Ezekiel Bible here he says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. I want to ask you God's people that every one of us who God has saved, the Balakola who are here, there is power in your utterance, in the things that you say. You can actually, and it may look foolish, it may look like you're losing your mind, People may not understand you, but I want to dare you begin prophesying over certain things in your life. For that child who has gone wayward, prophesy, call them back home by faith in the name of, rebuke the enemy in your own house. 
You don't have to keep complaining and murmuring. Prophesy. Speak life to that business that has gone down. You have authority. Yes, you may prophesy over it today. Nothing may happen immediately. You may continue prophesying over it tomorrow. Nothing much may have happened. Maybe in another week, nothing has happened. But as you keep prophesying, what you don't realize, the more you speak, because the power of life and death is in the tongue, the more you speak, the things that begin shifting and turning in the spiritual realm. But you have to keep at it. You have to keep speaking it. Do I have some witnesses in the house of the Lord? You have to keep declaring it. Listen, we cannot grow tired about our nation. We must keep prophesying. We must keep speaking what we want to see in this nation. Please, and when you prophesy, stop having certain politicians in mind. Just prophesy. The Lord, may your will be done. Lord, in this election, give us a good leader. Lord, in this election, give us a good president. Lord, in this election, give us men and women who fear you. I don't care who I'm going to vote for. If he's not the right candidate, Lord, don't make him president. Give me the man after your own heart. Oh, if only God's people could prophesy. If only God's people could de begin declaring certain things. Uh, did you know that your home, your house, your family can transform because of the words that proceed out of your mouth? Small wonder the Bible says that sometimes a bad wife is one who destroys her own home with her own mouth. But if you can destroy it with your own mouth, you can also create it. You can also bless it. You can proclaim certain things in your own house. Let me tell you this. You don't have to argue with your husband. I know he's not been very nice to you. Don't argue with him. Prophesy. Did you know when you tell him, I love you, you're prophesying? <laughs> because you're speaking the word of God. When he comes home and you ask him, honey, what can I do for you? You're prophesying. Because you're saying, I'm submitted to you according, in accordance with the word of God. And eventually, big things begin to happen. Problem is that we argue too much. We talk too much. We talk the wrong things. We say the wrong things. We complain. We murmur. God's people died in the wilderness because of murmuring. Because of complaining, sometimes things begin dying in our lives. We wonder what happened. The enemy had nothing to do with it. I killed it with my own mouth. Prophesy. And I have to move quickly here. But after he prophesied, so the Bible says here, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise. As I was prophesying, there was a noise. A rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. Notice, as he was prophesying, not before he prophesied, not when he stopped prophesying, as he was prophesying, you need to get this, friends. As I am prophesying this evening, Something is shifting in the spiritual realm. As I am speaking the word of the Lord, you may not feel it. You may not yet behold it, but something is happening. Why? Because the word of the Lord never returns to him void. As I'm prophesying, somebody's destiny is being changed. See, as Ezekiel began prophesying, suddenly there was a noise. There was a rattling. Things began to happen. See, the bones began to move. The head bone found its neck bone. The neck bone found its shoulder bone. The shoulder bone found its own rib cage. The rib cage found its own spinal cord. The spinal cord found its own pelvic bone. Every pelvic bone found its own leg bone. Every leg bone found its own feet bone. And every feet bone found its own finger bone. All the fingers started coming together. Things started happening. Ezekiel is still prophesying. He is still speaking. Instead of just being mesmerized, he continued talking, prophesying. Things were happening. Friends, what Ezekiel was experiencing that day was the sound of of revival what we have been experiencing since tuesday in this place 
is the sound of revival. When we have been coming here and singing the comforter has come, that is the sound of revival. Some of you, when you go back, things will seem to go upside down. And sometimes when things begin to shift in the spirit, it becomes uncomfortable. And sometimes you begin wondering, God, where are you? What you don't realize, he had your prayer. He had your cry. And what you're hearing and what you're saying is a sound of revival. Sitam, I came to tell you tonight, I hear the sound of revival. Corona was just a sound of revival. The things that have happened in the recent world is just a sound of revival. I wish I had a witness. It's a sound of revival. Something is happening. Something is shifting. Things will not be left the way they were. I prophesy in your life, nothing will remain the way it was in the name of Jesus. Because there's a sound of revival. There's a sound of revival. I can hear it in Sitam. We are going back to being a Pentecostal church because I hear the sound of go. Oh, I wish I had some witnesses in the house of the Lord. We are going back to a season where the sick will be healed. Oh, come on, where we'll see deliverance on our pulpits. I hear the sound of revival. I am talking about a season where while I am preaching, People will be running to the altar for salvation. I hear the sound of revival. Oh, I hear, I see a season where corruption will be broken. I hear, oh, I hear, does somebody hear the sound? Does somebody hear the sound of revival? It is coming. I said it is coming. The devil is a liar. He has kept us captive for too long. All the things that the enemy has stolen, God is bringing them back. There's going to be a restoration in the name of Jesus. Sound of revival. I say sound, somebody shout, sound. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. Stop hearing the sounds of discouragement. Stop hearing the sounds of the enemy. The sound the sound of revival it is happening i want to speak to Sitam. christ is the answer ministries and i thank god for our bishop on the first day he talked about that logo right there and he said uh, if you are listening if you are hearing that sound uh, he was saying that was not meant to be a corporate logo that was never meant to be a brand logo Oh, come on. Can I hear some people in the house? The cross. We are going back to the cross of Calvary. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Is anybody who is saying, Lord, uh, set me a place. Set me a place. Uh, set me a place, Lord. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of revival among our young people. It will no longer be entertainment, Pastor Moricho. They will not be coming to church so that they can have a DJ. They will be coming to church because they want the word. They want to be spirit filled. I hear the sound of revival among our children. That our children will be saved. Our children will speak in tongues. Our children will rebuke devils. Our children will prophesy. Our children will speak the word. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of revival. Oh, I hear the sound. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Begin with us tonight. I said, begin with us tonight. Begin with us. Begin with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin with us in this place. At this altar tonight. Oh, Lord. I'm hungry. Almost 30 years ago. Almost 30 years ago, I came, knelt on this altar, and the Lord met me. I started speaking in tongues right here on this altar, almost 30 years. I'll never forget, I'll never forget how we will open the altar, and people will run to the altar. Everybody will walk out of this altar speaking in tongues. Pastor Bandu, you remember those days. Oh, you remember those days, we'll come for a Kesha. We will pray. 
we will not even go on a break because people were hungry people were so hungry for the word they were so hungry for the presence i hear i said i hear i hear the sound of revival do it one more time do it one more time in the name of jesus listen so listen ezekiel suddenly their bodies the valley was now not a valley of dry bones it was a valley of dead bodies listen listen sometimes god puts us through a process a process as he prophesied a process was set in motion now but here's the problem because a process demands my patience because God is not done yet have you have, has God ever done something for you you knew he was doing something you even shared a testimony only for it to stop somewhere and now you're wondering do I withdraw the testimony did, did, did. come on talk to me in this house so now Ezekiel has a valley of dead which is better dead bones or dead bodies I, 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 at least bones don't stink <sighs> and Ezekiel I'm sure by this time confused Lord uh, why come on can we talk here and, and sometimes the ways of God are beyond comprehension. But I need to be patient. Some of you who are here, God has put you in a certain process. But you're giving up. You're losing heart. You're fainting. I came here to tell you, you cannot faint. Because it's not yet done. It's not over see time crisis and some ministries it's not over i said it is not over so then god gives gives him one more instruction he said then he said to me prophesy to the breath now in the old testament the word breath is the word ruach it is interchangeable it's the same word breath and spirit it's the same word it's the same word so he said prophesy to the breath prophesy son of man and say to it this is what the sovereign lord says come breathe come breathe from the four winds and breathe into this sling that they may live i prophesy tonight Breathe. Breathe. Every dead situation. Breathe. Breathe. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And, and, and breath entered them. They came to life. <laughs> suddenly, they squared up themselves, these bodies, suddenly, for life. See, when life enters you, when the Holy Spirit enters you, you cannot just remain dead. But it was not, they did not just stand up on their feet. It says, a vast army. It reminds me on that day of Pentecost when another 120 dead bones gathered in an upper room probably a bit discouraged because they had just seen the one who they had put their hope in he had gone up and then he had told them to wait he didn't tell them whether he was going to come on the first day second day third day he just said wait well we have lost the art of waiting but when the day of pentecost 
was fully come. They had the sound as of a mighty rushing wind. And every one of them was filled with the Holy Spirit. A flame of fire rested on every one of them. And they began to speak in tongues. Tongues that they had never been taught. And that place, I'm sure, was sounding like Sitam this evening. People began to speak in tongues. They began to worship in tongues. They began to call heaven in tongues. Not knowing, didn't want that moment to end. But why they were having a wonderful Holy Ghost moment. The people who had gathered in the city, coming for the feasts of Pentecost, they started wondering, that house is on fire. Oh Lord, oh Lord, take us back to those days as people will be driving down Valley Road. They will be looking and seeing a house on fire. A house. And the Bible says, and they came and supposing that these guys were drunk, then Peter, I love Peter. Peter was that guy who, by any standard, we could have said the guy was a loser. The guy denied Jesus three times. The guy had a bad temper. The guy had such a bad resume. If he came for membership, interview in Sitam, he would fail. I was just miserable. I mean, who goes cutting people's ears off? I mean, like, who goes one moment, oh, you're the, you're the Lord, the Savior, and then the next moment, until Jesus had to get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> but on that day, when that Holy Spirit touched that brother, he stood up among them. He said, this is that which was prophesied. Friends, the road to revival passes through the past. This is that. Listen, what we are waiting on the Lord for, this. We are not waiting on something he's not done before. He did it before. He did it a hundred years ago. This is that. Lord, do it one more time. Do it what? Come on, I wish I had some people who would start praying and say, Lord, one more time, Lord. One more time, Jesus. This is that. This is that. This is that. We don't want more denominationalism. We are not looking for more programs. We are not looking for better ideas of how to do church. We are not trying to be innovative. We are not trying to think outside the box of how we can become better at doing church. We are saying, Lord, one more time. One touch. Just one touch. Just one touch of your spirit. Just one touch of your Holy Ghost. Lord, do it one more time. Oh Lord, do it one more time. Do I have some people in this house who are saying tonight, Lord, just right here, not tomorrow, not on Sunday, not next week, when, not when it is more favorable. You're saying, tonight right here right now and you're saying lord one more touch fill me baptize me anoint me fall on me set me on fire if that is you you should be running to the altar say lord oh god i'm hungry i'm not hungry for more money i'm not looking for another church lord i'm looking for a move a move lord come on just run come on let's tonight 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 the altar as you come here don't wait for anybody to lay hands on you just go ahead throw those hands in the air open your open your mouth not caring who is here who is hearing my prayer just saying lord 
tonight right here right on this altar Jesus 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 well when you look around it doesn't seem like things are getting any easier coming out of a pandemic then economic hardship and it feels like a downward spiral where shall we turn to the Sidham Joint Worship Ministry invites you to four days of revival meetings themed Radiating His Glory from the 10th to the 13th of May 2022 from 5.30pm to 8pm daily at Sidham Valley Road. The main speaker will be the presiding bishop of Sidham, Reverend Kalisto Odede. We are embracing one another. We love one another because we are being made into a family. Also ministering will be Reverend Jesse Mwai while the Sidham Joint Worship Ministry will minister in music. The revival meetings will also stream live on the Sidham Church online youtube channel come, come let us relish times of refreshing that come from the presence of the lord acts chapter 3 verse 20